Welcome. Thanks for joining us for How to Survive a Networking Event. Without stroke, panic, nausea, or loss of intelligence, and even to make friends and new business contacts. I'm Michael Thurman, happy to be your host this afternoon. Let's get started, shall we? I know when we talk about networking, for many of us, it just brings up anxiety, panic, um, all sorts of other queasy feelings. Well, this is normal. This is natural. Um, I still have misgivings about networking events at times. Some days I just want to sit in the corner. And I've been doing this a long time. There are skills, though, that you can learn and that can really help make it a lot easier. Um, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, doesn't matter. Um, these are just tools that you can use uh, to be able to move through uh, the conversations much more easily and much more comfortably than you do now. You know, we have to remember why we do things. And, uh, you know, this is all about opportunities. Um, we're interested in new work opportunities, new business opportunities. Sometimes we're simply interested in meeting uh, new people, maybe someone to, uh, to work with while we develop our coding skills, um, someone to, uh, to be a mentor. So there are a lot of reasons to, to look for these opportunities, uh, but they all take these communication skills. Now, I know probably no one told you that you would need these when you started down the path um, that you're on. Those of you who are learning to uh, be front-end developers or back-end developers or have aspirations maybe even to do other things in technology. You know that uh, you know you got to build the technical skills and you guys are working working so hard at this and really I want to applaud you for all the work you're doing whether um, you're going to, uh, to school, uh, college or university to learn your tech skills whether you're doing the free code camp uh, or some other process of self-learning um, know that your work is valuable and, and, and I really laud you for that. Um, and, you know, these communication skills, they're just, you know, it's just something else. I mean, this all takes uh, so much courage and so much desire and so much drive um, to learn the tech skills, to learn the communication skills, to find the opportunities uh, to really build a career. That's all got to, that, that courage and that drive and that desire have to, to have a firm foundation on which to sit. And, and that firm foundation, quite frankly, is your self-image. Now, we're talking long-term. So long-term to sustain your, your vision and your courage uh, and your drive and your desire, a positive self-image is hugely important. You really have to do a lot of a lot of work to be comfortable with who you are, to know who you are, uh, to know why you're doing what you're doing, uh, to make sure that it fits you, uh, and and to make sure that this is you know this is a life that you enjoy. And sure, it's work, but you gotta love it. You gotta you gotta enjoy what you're doing. Be intrigued by it. Um, even if, you know, every once in a while you have to make yourself go do it, um, on balance, it has to be something that you really, really like, um, and that fits you. And, and to do that, you got to know yourself and, and really have, uh, have a, a, a positive self image. If your self image is, uh, like this, well, I'm not so sure that, you know, that's enough to really sustain what uh, we're talking about here. Um, you know, these guys play, uh, play the nerds who uh, are such, such deep stereotypes. Um, even the stereotypes on this show, you know, the four guys involved here um, don't have a whole lot of social awareness. Well, maybe Raj does, um, but he's got so many areas in which he is is unaware. Uh, Leonard's got some social skills, shows some growth, but still unaware in so many ways. Um, you know, that's, 
just a lot of work to be done in the mirror. I say that a lot. Um, people look at me kind of odd when I do, but you know that that's where there's understanding um, your drivers, what drives you, what energizes you, um, understanding really, really struggling with your fears. Um, all of this helps you to uh, to really have a firm and comfortable foundation on on which to build. And and if you're at all uncomfortable with networking, that's super important because if you can be calm and confident, um, even if you're not gregarious, you know the loud guy in the room, you can have meaningful conversations. I'll wager that if you're not the loudest guy or the loudest girl in the room, you're going to have more meaningful conversations than you would otherwise. And then all of a sudden, there's a change. Oh, look. Take the nerd crew, give them a little spit and polish, and they turn into three of the highest paid actors uh, working in American TV today, and one um, with a PhD in neuroscience. You know, it, it, it's just the, the trappings. And, and I'm not arguing for a change of clothing. Um, you know, your t-shirt and cargo shorts are, are fine in most situations. I'm not arguing that, that this is all about being visual. I'm just saying that um, you can, you can be, um, the change that, that you want to see that you visualize for your life. Um, networking is a part of this. We're going to do some skills, uh, some really, really easy skills. They take practice, but they're very simple to, to understand and to, uh, to, to put into, into play that can help you see yourself not as the nerd on the bench, but as the sophisticated adult working in uh, technology or uh, looking to work in technology. Now, here's how you can connect with me. Uh, Techlahoma Slack is a great way. LinkedIn, Twitter, um, of course. Um, I've spent most of my career working on the more on the, the people end of business. Always been uh, uh, in either sales, technical, or non-technical, or in uh, support um, roles. Uh, last few years, I've moved into um, administration roles. Uh, sysadmin, uh, program admin, uh, those kinds of things, and um, always, uh, always willing to uh, to have a conversation around this stuff. Um, have done my share of HTML and CSS, um, gosh, uh, Drupal, WordPress stuff, uh, and uh, of late uh, done uh, some JavaScript and uh, and some other stuff. Uh, my first bubble sort was written, oh God, in a year I don't even want to admit. But uh, anyway, I'm comfortable with, uh, with the tech and with people in tech and really want to help you um, move, move forward as, as you want to. All right, let's get on with, uh, with your icebreaker. Um, it would be nice and comfortable some days to be able to go around and just kind of spout a Hello World app or maybe have, uh, you know, tie, uh, tie an iPad or uh, um, an Android tablet to your shirt and let it do the talking for you, but we can't. Um, I have thought about uh, putting this little React snippet on a t-shirt. That might be kind of fun. Um, but honestly, if you carry around a cup of coffee and offer it to people, that might be a better icebreaker. But truly, the, the attention grabber, the best icebreaker that you can carry with you is one that you've always got with you, and that's your smile. And I mean just a genuine, relaxed, a pleasant look on your face. One that comes from being calm and, and, and confident and comfortable in your own skin. And, and that's, that's super important. Um, the smile will uh, come through in your voice and it will even come through in your eyes and the way you make eye contact. So you can go from making eye contact that looks like um, an, an offensive move um, or a uh, hateful stare or a scowl and to, uh, to eye contact that looks welcoming 
and uh, says, here, hey, shake my hand and say hello to me. Um, you know, this is, um, this seems kind of, kind of small, but it is, it is really important because if you feel confident and you feel comfortable, uh, you'll, you'll come across that way. Um, you'll be, you'll come across as more pleasant. You'll be friendlier, more approachable. And that's really important. See, sometimes when you're standing off to the side and you're scared to death to talk to anyone, if that is you, that comes out. And it, But it looks like you're choosing to be aloof when you're not. You're standing in the corner scared to talk to anyone, but just giving off this vibe that maybe you, you didn't intend. So I want you to, to just... Relax and do that work in the mirror and be able to smile not only uh, you know with uh, uh, your you know your face and your eyes and your posture and, and that'll all bleed through and you'll soon be um, an ace networker. Now names if you're not good with names that's okay we can practice um, there are techniques for that names are important. Get the name correct. Um, we have regional differences of origin. Uh, friends and family used to call me Mike, which if you're from the South, talking to somebody from the Northeast, it comes back to you as reflected as Mark. Oh, my name's not Mark. Or my first name is not Michael, and HR folks all the time call me by the government name, and I just look at them kind of weird and say, yeah, that ain't me, and they get all confused. It is, but, you know, it's not. It's not the name that has meaning. Our names have meaning, so, so pick those up. Learn to pronounce them. We're going to be, you know, maybe meeting people from different cultures than those in which we grew up. Um... We need to learn to pronounce those people with with you know interesting spellings, um, whatever the case may be. You know, give people that respect, um, and it will come across that way as respect and acceptance, just by pronouncing their name correctly and remembering it, and then using it. Uh, Dale Carnegie um, wrote several books on. Um, the soft skills, um, a long time ago, nearly a century ago now, the language may be a little stiff uh, for some of you, but if you'll push through it, there's a lot of, a lot of good advice on uh, uh, being uh, on human interaction, and especially in a professional situation. And the, a lot of the middle-aged and older business leaders you run into, that's what um, you know they grew up on as far as learning their professional etiquette. So, you know, understand that stuff and um, those techniques, adapt them and use them, and um, you'll, you'll go a long way. Um, be sure and, and ping me if you have questions about any, any of that stuff, too. Now, we're going to a networking event, and, you know, the idea I think some of us have is, that, you know, hey, we're going to look for people, look at, meet people that, you know, maybe they can give us a job, maybe our first job in tech, maybe a better job in tech. Um, but, you know, it's like we're mining for gold. Well, I want to turn that on its head. I don't want you to mine for gold uh, in what you're going to get. I want you to ask questions uh, to find the gold in the conversation. That is asking questions of the other person. You know, hey, what do you do? Um, how do you do it? Uh, you know, what's your favorite thing about, about what you do? What's your favorite thing about your, your company's culture? How would you get in tech? All sorts of things you can ask to, to keep a conversation going and be interested in the person in front of you. Um, you know, these, these four fellows um, were known for, uh, at the end of their careers, for doing things that, that required a lot of networking. Uh, some did it as a lifelong part of their career and, um, you know, better than others. One of these fellows is particularly renowned for his ability to work a crowd, and not only that, but to make you feel like you are the only person in the room, even if there's 50,000 other people there. Uh, President Clinton was able to take 30 seconds, say your name, 
remember your name, ask you meaningful questions based on whatever it was you said to him, and it just make you feel like it was just the two of you in this room in a, in a, in a conversation. And, I, you know, that allowed him to, you know, surprise a lot of people in his career, some positively, some negatively. But when it comes to making connections, that kind of thing works and you can learn it. It's a skill. It's really kind of like uh, the way you should, <laughs> you should truthfully in relationships, you know, it's not about me. It is about you. Well, the beginning in networking is that way. It's not about me. It's about you. The person, or for you, the person that's in front of you that you're meeting and talking to. And if you'll pay uh, a close mind to that, you really will find gold in the long run. You know, it's about giving and not selling. You're not here to sell your services. You're here to, to be in a conversation, to make a connection. And if you can, you know, give value in that conversation, even if the only value is your undivided interest in the person in front of you. That'll be memorable, and that will turn into a long-term conversation that can have some, some meaning. Now, we're going to talk about active listening. That's really the skill that President Clinton used. Uh, there are five, uh, five keys and a corollary, I'll call it. So the first is pay attention. Uh, put your cell phone away. Turn the ringer off. Um, put your watch on. Do not disturb. Pay attention to the people in front of you. That's a key. Big, 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 big. If your eyes are roaming, if you look nervous, if you're checking your phone, you're checking your watch, I don't think you want to talk to me. And if you don't want to talk to me, I'm going to reflect that back and I don't want to talk to you. So when we're networking or having many meaningful conversations, this is super important to pay attention. Uh, that's eye contact, uh, nodding your head to show that you're listening, responding verbally as appropriate with things like, hmm. Oh yeah, tell me more, or uh-huh. Just something to, to let the person know that you're with them while you're making eye contact and smiling and being being relaxed. And then provide feedback, you know, when it comes to your turn to say words. Um, paraphrase something that they've said uh, that's an interest to you and ask a deeper question about it. Be genuine, don't, don't be fake, don't just make stuff up because it's a technique. But, but find something in what they said and be genuine and, and show them that you really were listening and trying to, trying to grasp and understand what they were talking about. Now, defer judgment on the opinions, um, observations, um, gosh, even appearance of the person in front of you. Um, professional networking, sure. We all, we all are quick to, to judge people uh, by many criteria. Uh, but, but I encourage you to, to show respect, even if you've got to have the song R-E-S-P-E-C-T playing in your head while you're doing this event. Uh, I want you to do that, to understand that you're going to show respect to whoever's in front of you. Uh, if, you know, if they're in a suit, that's okay. If they're in t-shirt and shorts, you know, if that's appropriate, that's okay. Um, hair color, um skin art, jewelry, um, gender, behavior, uh, you know, as, as long as it's not something that's, you know, that's, um, you know, dangerous or socially unacceptable. Um, I did work with a guy who uh, lasted four hours on his first day because his behavior was not respectful in uh, many ways. You know, don't be that person. Um, be the person that's known for, um, for respecting others and and not judging them for whatever whatever reason it could be, and that'll take you a long way as well. And then respond appropriately to to questions that you're asked um, in return, and and just enjoy the conversation. Now the the RESPCET corollary has a couple of things. Um, the first is is empathy. Now this is something that. Um, 
uh, empathy is, is something that is super important. Uh, we've talked, we, you know, we know about sympathy, and that's when, uh, you know, I, I want to try to feel what you're feeling, experience what you're experiencing. Uh, people often want sympathy. They want somebody to, to you know, to, to be where they are with them. Uh, empathy is different. Empathy is understanding what the other person is, um, that the other person is experiencing something and acknowledging that and, and um, responding based on that. Um, you know, if, uh, if I can detect that you're feeling uncomfortable in a conversation in some way, I can respond to that. Um, even, even if I'm not uncomfortable or if I'm not aware of anything I'm doing specifically, um, I can respond and say, hey, you know, um, you seem a little uncomfortable. Can you help me understand that? Um, being, being empathetic uh, without taking on those emotions. Now, going down that road, being empathetic, guys especially, um, understand when your words or your actions, maybe they're just based on nervousness, uh, maybe they're based on the fact that uh, somebody told you that networking and sales or whatever were like hunting. Um, when you're talking to um, people maybe that are, you know, guys that are smaller than you, be aware of how they respond. When you're talking to women, be aware of how they're responding to you. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of talk in our culture about those kinds of dynamics. You may not be aware of anything, but you also need to be aware or try to be aware of the signals the other person is giving you and be respectful. Um, you don't know what circumstances they, they bring with them. You don't know what, what preconceived notions they bring with them. You don't know why they're responding um, negatively, but you need to try to understand that they are, be empathetic, and uh, that'll take you a long way. Um, because if you don't, in some circumstances, you know, at work especially, it'll take you a long way, like all the way to HR. So let's let's try to really hone in on, on this one and make that a big part of the toolkit. So know when to let go. Sometimes the conversation will wind to an end and uh, you just, you know, you need to let the other person go network with other people. You need to go talk to other people. Um, if you've made a genuine connection, um, we'll show you here in a little bit how you will maintain that connection and continue that conversation. Before you let go, though, remembering each other is key. So share contact details. Now, um, traditionally, we've done this with business cards. They're relatively inexpensive um, to get made, especially if you go to one of the online uh, um, print houses. Uh, if you want to go to a stationery store and print your own, you're welcome to do that, but I encourage you to use personal cards, not company cards, um, especially if you're at a networking event looking for a new job. Um, that's, yeah, that wouldn't be cool. So get personal cards. Um, you don't have to put all this information on there. Put your name, uh, a couple of ways to get in touch with you, maybe your website, social media, if you want to be found that way, um, your your GitHub links, um, that kind of thing, so that people can connect back with you and get those contact information from the people that you talk to. Now, you don't have to use cards. You can use um, apps, uh, any number of apps that are great for this. Just make sure you do it. But if you're using your phone, make sure you remember during the conversation to put that thing away and pay attention. Now, before you forget, find a way to make notes. You can use a notebook if you want. You can, again, you can use an app. Um, in, you know, on your device uh, as long as it doesn't get in the way of the conversations. This is, this is super, super important. Um, the biggest social faux pas of um, this century so far has been looking at your cell phone during a meeting, during a conversation, and not being present. Uh, so, so be present and then remember 
to make notes so that you can have something tangible. You know, I want to be able to look at my notes and say, hey, I talked to Jeff. Um, he does a lot of work with Kubernetes. He loves GitLab because, um, you know, he can do Helm charts and, and, and uh, um, runners and, and workload runners and all sorts of stuff in that. He's got three kids that are about the same age as mine. And, you know, that's that's important things to next time I see Jeff, I can say, oh, hey, how are the kids doing or how's the college age kid or, you know, something important that's appropriate. It's personal, but it's appropriate for a professional relationship or, hey, you know, hey, did you see the new thing at GitLab? Something like that. Because then you got to go do it again, just like shampoo, rinse and repeat. So go follow up your success or Dust off the last one that didn't go so well, that, that experiment, and do another one. A follow-up is important. Within seven days of the event, you need to have sent, by some means, communication to follow-up. Could be a handwritten note. That would be super special. Let me tell you, you want to be remembered, send a handwritten note. Um, could be an email. It could be a DM on Slack or Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, however you think that person would want to be communicated with, just make sure that you do it with each and every one. Get these conversations going because it's not necessarily at the event or the week after the event, but maybe two or three or four or five weeks, maybe six months down the road, that these, these relationships really start bringing back to you what you've invested in them. Uh, the main points. So at the end of this slide, uh, I'm going to pause. let you uh, click pause, and you can screenshot this and have all the main points in one place. Um, how you see yourself is important. you got to be comfortable in your own skin. you got to have a handle on your fears. Um, be confident, be calm, be, be just, just comfortable as who you are and, and let, that, let that show. You know, if you're scared, if you're hunting, if you're um, intimidated, uh, that's all going to impact everything. The, 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 you know, the, the, all, the reverse is also true. If you're, you know, if you're overconfident, if you're arrogant, that's going to hurt as well. Greet confidently, you know, smile, smiling eyes. A handshake, if, if that's appropriate for some people, that's not. Um, be conscious of that. Uh, I will say that in, in almost every professional situation, um, contact beyond a handshake is probably not appropriate unless you are super, 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 super close to the person you're talking to. And in that case, why are you talking to them at a networking event? You should be talking to somebody else. Most people love hearing your names. Remember that. You repeat it, and it will help you remember it, too. Have some good questions prepared in your pocket. That way, if you get nervous, okay. Go with your canned questions to, as kind of warm-ups. It's okay. Um, back when I worked uh, in college, I worked in broadcasting, and we have to do interviews with people. Um, and this was a key thing that uh, my mentor taught me. Have questions prepared. I don't care how long you've done it, have something in the can because everybody goes blank at some point. Um, great advice. Listen actively, you know, pay attention, put your phone away, show you're listening, provide feedback, be respectful and, and not judgmental. Um, respond appropriately to, to the conversation, you know, and um, have empathy and show it. Remember, you're going to go away and, and, and work on empathy, uh, right? Good. Uh, know when to let go of the conversation. Have personal cards or some way to share a, a somewhat professional, personal contact uh, information with the, per with the other person. Get theirs as well. Uh, you know, if you're at that, like a job fair or something like that, you're going to get business information from them, but you're giving them your personal contact information. Um, you know, make it, I don't know. Would, uh, would a yahoo.com address be as good as, say, you know, your own domain name? Maybe not. Think about, you know, think about how that presents and uh, just be, be professional and uh, look like the professional that, that you really want to become. 
make notes about each conversation and follow up, follow up, follow up. Oh, and have fun. This is not supposed to be uh, a root canal. This is supposed to be a fun event. And if you if you look at it at that and you relax like that, uh, like it's going to be fun and make it fun, uh, smiling and, and just really just enjoying uh, talking to other people, even if you're an introvert, it'll go easier. Now, if you're an introvert, it'll be more draining. It won't be energizing, but that's okay. You'll do great. Now, click pause, take a screenshot, and just a second, click play, and we'll carry on. All right, now that you've got, uh, got the main points down, questions. Uh, you know, usually we do these events as live events, and um, so it's easy for us to, uh, to have questions and uh, really want to be able to respond to, uh, to you. So uh, probably hit me up, uh, you know, on Slack um, or DM me on Twitter, uh, message me on LinkedIn if you're there. But uh, you know, any kind of questions, if you guys are looking for resources, you just want to keep the conversation going for the free code camp groups in Oklahoma City and in Norman, you know, if you guys want to set up some kind of, um, you know, practice sessions, uh, you know, we can, we can talk about that and, and I'm sure we can, we can get that uh, groups together that can practice these skills. That'll be a key. Practice, practice, practice. Deliberate practice is going to help a lot. Um, anyway, I deeply appreciate you spending the last half hour with me. Um, I hope, hope, hope deeply that um, these tips will, will really help you make the most of your, your professional networking um, and, and help you become much more comfortable um, in your own skin, doing this kind of thing. Um, that'll, that'll pay dividends for you for the rest of your career. Um, and it has deeply been my pleasure, um, you know, to, to give you um, this, uh, this presentation. Um, really have enjoyed it and, uh, and hope that it, uh, that it has great value to you. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day and a happy networking.